Are you ready to dive into the world of archaeology and unravel some of the most baffling mysteries of the ancient world? Join us on an adventure to explore the most enigmatic and unusual archaeological discoveries from around the globe. From unusual ancient artifacts to strange and unexplained structures, these finds challenge our understanding of history and have puzzled experts for years. It's no wonder some of them find these discoveries scary. We have no idea whether this next mysterious find is part of a gruesome torture punishment or if it's merely an elaborate prank. Found in the medieval crime museum in the German city of Rotenburg, we're told that this device is a scold's bridle and it was used to punish people who'd been caught lying or gossiping. Allegedly, the heavy metal masks were used during the 16th century across Germany and much of the rest of Europe, including Britain. From studying the device, we can see that once it was secured in place, the mouth attachment would push back the wearer's tongue, preventing them from speaking and also causing them a great deal of pain. Some British records suggest that it wasn't just liars and gossipers who had to worry about being trapped inside one of these. Bad musicians or dishonest tradesmen were also likely to be punished the same way. Some of the British records may have been forged by the Victorians, who were prone to exaggeration and fabrication, but there's no doubt that the devices themselves were real. Perched high atop a mountain overlooking the picturesque city of Suenca, Spain, is a haunting pair of eyes that have become the subject of a local legend. Painted anonymously on the rugged surface of the mountain, these two blue eyes are a constant reminder of a tale of forbidden love that has been passed down from generation to generation for nearly a thousand years. The city of Suenca, with its well-preserved medieval architecture, sits atop a hill of limestone that was once a fortress built by the Moors during the Muslim conquest of the Iberian Peninsula in 714. The legend of Los Ojos de la Mora, or the Eyes of the Moor, dates back to the 12th century, when the city was conquered by Christians. As the legend goes, a beautiful Moorish woman and a Christian soldier fell in love, but their love was forbidden by the strict religious laws of the time. Despite their efforts to keep their love a secret, tragedy befell the couple when the young soldier was assassinated by a group of Moors organized by a rejected suitor. Heartbroken and unable to bear the pain of living without her love, the woman eventually died, and it is said that her spirit still watches over the city from the mountaintop, with her eyes gazing down at the place where she was meant to meet her lover. The Scavenger's Daughter, a torture device invented during the reign of King Henry VIII of England, is undoubtedly one of the most brutal instruments of torture ever conceived. Designed by Sir Leonard Skevington, Lieutenant of the Tower of London, this metal A-frame rack had a disturbingly simple design. The victim's head was fastened to the top point of the A, the hands at the midpoint, and the legs at the lower spread ends. When the frame folded, the body was compressed, blood oozed from the nose and ears, and the victim was left in unimaginable pain. This complement to the traditional rack was used in numerous cases, including the torture of the English Catholic priest Thomas Cottam, who endured it twice before his eventual execution in 1582. It was so inhumane that Thomas Meig, an Irishman accused of being in contact with rebels in Ireland, left a chilling message on the wall of the Beauchamp Tower in the Tower of London. By torture strange my truth was tried, yet of my liberty denied. It was probably the last thing he ever did. Archaeologists in southwest Spain made astonishing discoveries during an excavation in Badajoz in April 2023. These discoveries could change our understanding of the pre-Roman Iberian culture of the region. The team discovered five life-size stone busts dating back to the 5th century BCE, showing that the Tartessian civilization was much more sophisticated than previously thought. The Tartessians have long been considered a mysterious civilization, with tales of their wealth and military prowess sometimes veering into mythical territory. More specifically, Tartessians were thought to be a non-iconic culture, but the discovery of sculptures shatters this idea. 
The statues were found in a 2,500-year-old two-story building at the Casas de Turunuelo archaeological site, which is described as unique in the Western Mediterranean. The site contained artifacts suggesting the building was an economic and political center for the local area. The surviving sculptures may have been buried to protect them from the same act of destruction that wrecked the building. It could still be true that the Tartesians were mighty warriors with piles of gold and wealth, but if these sculptures are anything to go by, they were also a highly sophisticated and artistic culture. In a quaint town called Burrs in the Suffolk countryside of England, the legend of the Burrs dragon has captivated locals and tourists alike for centuries. As the story goes, in 1405, the village was besieged by a giant fire-breathing dragon, leaving the residents trembling in fear. With serrated teeth and a long tail, the creature was impervious to arrows and even killed a shepherd and his flock. But what real-life creature could have inspired such a terrifying tale? Some believed that it was a crocodile, gifted to King Richard I during the Crusades, that made its way to the marshes near Burrs. That wouldn't explain the alleged fire-breathing, but we all know how much hyperbole can creep into stories like this one over time. Regardless of the true origin, the Burrs dragon remains a beloved local legend, inspiring a 15th century painting in the nearby Whissington Church, and more recently, a hill carving to commemorate the beast, which was created during the Queen's Golden Jubilee year of 2012. The Burrs dragon is a testament to the enduring power of myths and legends to captivate our imaginations, even in the modern era. When we think of jewelry, gold, silver, or precious gems may come to mind. But for the Victorians of Britain, jewelry made out of human hair was the more trendy accessory. Making art and accessories out of hair or hair work was popular for centuries before it went out of fashion in the 1920s. According to Victorian Gothic, husbands wore watch fobs made of their wives' hair, while locks from the deceased were crafted into rings and brooches. Ladies even collected snippets of hair from their friends to add to their autograph books. Hair was also used to make wreaths, necklaces, and other pieces of jewelry. One famous guidebook to the art of hair work, Self-Instructor in the Art of Hair Work, was published in 1867. Today, a small group of organizations is dedicated to preserving the craft of hair work. At the Morbid Anatomy Museum, one can even take a class on hair jewelry making, provided that they bring their own hair. While it may seem morbid to some, hair work was a unique and sentimental way to keep loved ones close and remain fashionable while doing it. Hidden beneath the ancient walls of St. Catherine's Old Church in Malta lies a secret passageway that holds a haunting tale. The church is also sometimes known as St. Gregory's, and its passageway was discovered in the 1960s and is said to be the final resting place of hundreds of souls, as it contains a large number of human bones. According to local legend, the people buried here were lost during the siege of 1614. However, studies conducted between 1978 and 1980 suggests that the bones were exhumed and moved from a cemetery and that the deaths occurred some time before that. The church, built before 1436, was once a parish church that served southeast Malta for three centuries. It was also used as a watchtower, with the orientation of its transept aligned with the bays of Marsaxlock, St. Thomas Bay, and Marsaskala Bay. The secret tunnel was ideal for lookouts watching for Barbary pirates who frequently landed in these bays. The church even doubled as a smoke signal station to communicate unwanted landings to French troops in the north. The passageway may be macabre, but it is a reminder of the church's historical significance and the people it once served. The Middle Ages were a time of brutality and violence, and no torture device exemplified that more than the iron chair. The mere sight of the device was enough to strike fear in the hearts of its victims, many of whom were accused of witchcraft. The chair was covered in hundreds of sharp spikes, which would impale the back, seat, armrests, leg rests, and foot rests of whoever sat in it. The torture would start with the torturer progressively tightening the restraints, pushing the spikes deep into the victim's flesh, 
and sometimes placing weights on the victim's thighs or feet. The spikes didn't penetrate vital organs, so blood loss was minimal, but the pain was excruciating, and death often followed once the victim was released. Some versions of the chair even had spikes on the headrest, and the torturer would push the victim's head against it. The iron chair was not only a tool for torture, but also a psychological weapon. Often, the torturer would force the victim to watch someone else being tortured with the chair to coerce a confession. The iron chair's terrifying legacy lasted until the late 1800s in Europe and other parts of the world, under different names such as Chinese torture chair, Judas chair, and chair of torture. Let's talk about a strange piece of jewelry that was found inside the tomb of Tutankhamun when it was opened by Howard Carter in 1922. It's a green gemstone ring that historians claim contains a depiction of the ancient Egyptian deity Ptah, but when you look at it, the figure engraved into its surface doesn't look anything like traditional depictions of Ptah at all. Instead, it looks rather more like the textbook Grey Alien of Myth and Legend. That's why the artifact is referred to as Tutankhamun's alien ring by so many fringe theorists on the internet. The ancient Egyptians were so different from and so much more advanced than the cultures around them during the peak of their powers that many fringe theorists believe that they had external assistance with their technology. And when we say external, we mean extraterrestrial. To believers of such theories, the ring is solid physical evidence. Mainstream theorists are a little more skeptical and dismiss the idea of the figure being an alien as childish nonsense. But there are still unanswered questions about why it looks the way it does. There's something a little eerie about looking at these stone masks, which come from the Judean hills in Israel. Perhaps it's because they look a little like human skulls, and they were probably designed that way on purpose. The masks were designed by Neolithic people 9,000 years ago, and as all the features of the masks are different, they're probably all intended to represent different people. It could even be that they're supposed to represent the spirits of a deceased relative or loved one, and were worn by someone who was mourning their passing. Each of the masks has holes in them, possibly to allow a cord to be passed through them to make them easier to wear. Alternatively, the holes may have allowed hair to be secured to the mask to make the effect more convincing. The features on some of the masks appear to be those of young people, while others show unmistakable signs of age. Were they used in magic ceremonies and rituals? Or were they decorative items to be worn for fun at Stone Age parties? We may never know. Ta Prom, an ancient temple in Cambodia's Krong Siam Reap, has been abandoned for so long that the war between nature and stone for the sovereignty of the site has come to a standstill. In some places, roots and branches have gotten so far through the stonework that they're the only thing keeping the old walls upright. In 1186, during the pinnacle years of the Khmer Empire, King Jayavarman VII ordered the temple to be established as a Buddhist monastery and the stone face of his mother that he ordered to be put into one of the walls is still plainly visible, even if it has been heavily weathered by the passing centuries. There are other beautiful carvings and statues at the site, but the so-called Taprom dinosaur, which appears in one of the corners, is by far the most notable. Although it closely resembles a dinosaur and cannot be mistaken for anything else, dinosaurs were not discovered until 1824. How could a carving of a dinosaur be found in a 900-year-old Cambodian temple when none of the people who built it had ever seen one? Our final incredible artifact can be looked at and interpreted in one of two ways. The first is as the skull of an extraterrestrial being. The second is as the skull of a human child who passed away long ago because of congenital hydrocephalus. The latter explanation sounds more plausible but the problem is that it doesn't resemble the skull of any other known congenital hydrocephalus patient. This is the Star Child skull, and it's said to have been found during the 1930s at the entrance to a mine tunnel in Chihuahua, Mexico. It's abnormally large, with a wide back and huge shallow eye sockets. 
American author and paranormal researcher Lloyd Pye claims the skull resembles the size and shape of the typical gray alien that's so often described in UFO abduction reports, and he has a point. However, scientists say that the skull was tested in Vancouver in 1999 and found to contain traces of X and Y chromosomes, proving beyond all reasonable doubt that the owner of the skull was human. Those who believe in the alien origin theory say that it's impossible to obtain enough strands of DNA or genetic material from the skull to reach that conclusion, and so the matter remains open for debate. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.